Oh, pandemic. Yeah. Who'd have thought our generation facing a crisis like this? And don't you think it's kind of like, I don't know, every time you ever watch a zombie film, you're always just wondering what's going to happen after that. It's kind of cool. It's kind of just like easing your way into that future. I like it. I like how everything's kind of just gotten a bit more tense and everybody's like really on guard and suspicious of each other. I just feel like I'm in a movie. Like a 30 to 40 million dollar movie. <laughs> That's some Joker vibes going on right there. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I just want to see the world burn. <laughs> no, I want to see it singed. That's okay. what I think. And okay. I think so you don't, you don't want a full blown panic. You just want. I just, I just want to see people. what happens when things don't go according to. Fuck, I am the Joker, aren't I? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> no, but like. That's a little bit psychopathic. Yeah, it's, it's, well, fuck it is. Yeah, you're right. Like, obviously, I don't want people dying and things like that. But like, just seeing, you know. Panicking over into, toilet paper. That's funny to watch. It's just... Okay, it is one of those horror films if it was based in Australia, isn't it? Pretty much. That's fuck. And you've been to a supermarket, right? What a bunch of cunt. Yeah. I mean, this is coming from somebody who just said pandemics are kind of cool. I think those people are a bit self-absorbed. Yeah, you're it's, not going to die if you can't clean your ass, okay? Yeah. You're going to be okay. Why do they give a shit about the toilet paper? You is have, this even part of the coronavirus? Them, I don't know. Like, um, are you good? Are you stocked? Well, I've got two rolls, but I'm just <laughs> gonna go the Indian way. <laughs> What's that? You get Hand like and wash. Yeah. <laughs> it's more hygienic when you think about it. Look, Explain if, it, how. if there was shit on anything else, mm. would you just wipe it with a paper towel, or would you like get a wet cloth, mm. put some moisture in it, and clean it properly? Oh fuck. Okay, so you're gonna have a shit cloth. No, I'm not going to have a cloth, but like you'd use water <laughs> okay, okay. to clean your ass properly. And then you wash your hand. It's honestly more hygienic. I don't do okay. it yet, but I probably will. All right. Okay. I've successfully freaked you out, but you have freaked me out just as much. I yeah. can't do it, man. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to have to come up with something else. Maybe I'll just get a bidet installed. I'll go I mean, for that. sure. But this is just like a, a hand bidet. <laughs> But dude, don't you think it's... This is what I'm saying. It's interesting that everyone has something interesting to talk about for once. There's never any small talk when you're at the news agency anymore. That's it's kind of just like, you know, chapter 200 cases now. It's it, Everything's just got this really sinister but that, grey vibe That's already become it. small talk now. Mm. It's kind of boring. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm over you're it. right. All right. We've, Everything we've just all seen the normal. case numbers. Yeah, I mean, I want something different. Yeah. That's, That's just true. my crazy attention span now. I'm, just, I'm bored of this. <laughs> Something else happened. Truly a product of TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100k on TikTok, by the way. I am. Yeah, dominating. Damn, you must be proud of that. Two months, less than two months, 100k. So how how often are you uploading? Because I don't even have it. Yeah, you do. I have it, but I don't have it because I can't. Look at this shit. You think that's gonna fucking? Play oh, you TikTok? personally don't? Yeah, you. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your right hand man does it Your slaves do it Yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it um, I upload I try to upload twice a day Yeah But I've taken a break After I got After I hit 100k By the way Follow me on TikTok If you haven't already It's just my name <laughs> I got I got 100k followers on TikTok In less than two months And I still don't have 100k on Instagram And I've had that for seven years I don't know why that is Oh no I know why You don't have tit Sure. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, an A cup, you know, <laughs> got something. And there's, there's a solid C cup there, <laughs> and it's mostly muscle, but there's some fat. There's uh, some fat. Oh, uh, yuck. Uh, female bodybuilder tits. Stop body shaming me. <laughs> You're saying I got female bodybuilder tits? Isn't that what they'd have? Is it like when you look at them, yeah, it's just well. pick? It's not a boob. It's straight dominate muscle. Mm. Some people are into it, though. I've, I've looked on that. Yeah, you know, I've been through Pornhub. I know what goes on there. <laughs> were you were you looking at this uh, for your own enjoyment or just for research purposes? I mean, look. What were you searching? Purposes, Female was, bodybuilder. No, it just. I don't know. It dominates just comes skinny on. guy with a strap on. Is that it? Gets the barbell. Where are you putting the barbell? Where do now you I'm think? To pitch where do you think you're cock. putting it? Where? No, in. In the rear. 
Dude, that's such a Where else would you put What do you mean you put the barbell in the cock? What the fuck? <laughs> Ugh, fuck Neil. This is the best. This is the best start to a podcast. <laughs> yeah. I think we both thrive in uh, these kind of panic situations because we're. I think comedians all have a little bit of the Joker in them. Yeah, we're all just like, yeah, good. Like, well, you, you watch the world burn. Yeah. This and, is funny. And you know what else as well? Everybody just be like, what am I gonna do without any money, dude? Welcome to the life of a comedian. Like, there's just so many years of like. Imagine just how poor <laughs> struggle. Imagine how little money comedians have now. <laughs> Damn, yeah, they're done. Yeah, yeah, they uh, have the no, same amount of money as gold. Uh, yeah. Try to try to help them out if you've got the means. Buy their merch. Yeah. Not us. Uh, the, 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 you know, the touring comedians are doing it the toughest. They're the ones who rely solely on uh, uh, live gigs for their income and often live gig to gig. They're... Well, they'll be on the dole, probably. No, no. Well, what's new? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, still roasting them in this tough time. <laughs> you still get a roast, guys. Damn. <laughs> Savage, the, the, our fellow you really are the joker, aren't though. you? Yeah. Really... <laughs> I know. Yeah, I do enjoy it a little bit too much. Damn. Look, I, I don't, I don't enjoy like the the mass hospital system and stuff like that. But you, dude, you have to admit, like it is, it's. It is the Joker's theory. Just like society doesn't go exactly the way it's supposed to. It just like crumbles a little bit, and it just goes way too far from that. It's just this domino effect. Of, yeah. Like, you know. Okay. Um. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe social distancing might be a good idea. Oh my god, just lock woolies to yourself. It's like, I don't, I, I don't get it. Yeah, well, I really don't understand. And there's such a flow on effect because if uh everyone, if if one or two people start panic buying, no one's gonna care. Well, he's doing but, it. Yeah, exactly. Because mm. then you got to think for yourself. You're like, well, fuck, if everyone's panic buying, there actually is gonna be a. Sh- <laughs> they create the shortage. There yeah. was no shortage. They created it by hoarding. It's stock market in real life. It's just like it's, it's wow, entirely yeah. based the off confidence. The shares of toilet paper are just up ten thousand percent. By the way, uh, at the previous podcast, which we're probably not going to release at this stage, uh, was about finances, and we we filmed we filmed two podcasts on um, the the night before the Super Tuesday elections in America. We got all the predictions for the election wrong. Well, I definitely did. I say, yeah, Bernie's definitely going to get a, a plurality here. You're lock in for the week. Yeah, yeah, got that. <laughs> Definitely got that wrong, but who doesn't? And, yeah, I know, everyone thing, got like that everybody wrong. always everyone got that wrong. The really good people, even people Biden like, got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, and Bernie got who it wrong. Going up against Bob Dole, yeah, that's right, <laughs> my opponent here. Yeah, he got it the most wrong, and he had the most to gain. Is he getting anything right anymore? Like, does he know what year it is? I don't know. But he goes in and out. I do like the corn pop stories. I got to say. I'm I'm just like the fact that the next president is going to be Abraham Lincoln. So look, I I retract everything I said in the last podcast. It's kind of again, it's funny. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that look, dude, I I really don't think that there's any shame in getting predictions on elections wrong. It's so like everyone's always just like you've got no credibility because you got it wrong. Does anyone ever get it right 100? percent Have you seen the footage Fair. of Chank Yuga? Fair. Like it's like 11 minutes wrong of him just saying. I don't know, like, Donald Trump is never going to be the president, okay? And then it, like, gets to him being president, and then you just be like, I said it from the beginning, Wait. day one, <laughs> Donald Trump is going to make <laughs> So many commentators like that. That's what you need Not to do. Not just in politics. In, uh, well, Gus Gould in rugby league, he's a prime example. Is he? Yes. Yes. Not last, okay, two years ago. He was saying at the start of the season, he was like, yeah, the Dragons have got it. Dragons have got it, 100%. Three quarters of the way through the season, I think he started saying the Sharks are going to win. <laughs> then he said the grand final was going to be between the Sharks and um, some other team. That didn't make it into the grand final. And then the grand final was the Roosters in the Storm. The Roosters won. And he was like, yeah, said it all along. I just knew the Roosters <laughs> were going to win. <laughs> You just need that Gus Gould confidence. Because if you say it, say it with confidence, people forget. Yeah, I think that's probably what happens, man. Yeah. Like, is that a meme? Does everyone know that he's known for that? Or is it just you picked up on it because you were watching a lot of the commentary? Um, I think people would probably realise it, but I don't, it's not a meme yet. Okay. 
Then he's safe. Start it. And look, I don't think there's a big home. crossover. The people who listen to this podcast and are, uh, uh, you know, intense rugby league fans. But you never know. You never know. I am. So could be someone else. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. Some, someone's got to start the fire. And look, the thing is, if you did that anyway, he should be thanking you. That would be a huge leg up for his career if he became a joke. It's the best thing for old celebrities to be. Yeah, a joke. yeah, yeah. Look at Keanu Reeves. <laughs> That just yeah. gave his career a second one. But anyway, look, we got sidetracked there. We also recorded another uh, podcast on that particular night, and it was uh, all about finances. And there were a few things we said there. We said, look, the market's taking a bit of a dip because of coronavirus. Now's a good time to buy. <laughs> good we didn't release that. Maybe now would be a good time to buy. Uh, and then I think we also said some things about mm, people who don't save money. They've only got themselves to blame. So not not the right environment to uh, be espousing views like that. Yeah, yeah. I think. Neil, you've clearly learned from your stand-up years to read the room. I have not, because I encourage you to just do it. But you know, I think you made the right call. Let's it, wait we, we will, two weeks. We will release that podcast eventually, but yeah. we'll release this one in in the meantime. And when it comes to self-isolation and coronavirus gets even worse, we will have to release it then. This is a ticking yeah. time bomb in our hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be done. Yeah, because if we have to isolate from each other, yeah. there'll be no other content. I'm not doing this on Skype. We... It sounds... Right. Ho- I hate that. Have you noticed all of these like big American talk night shows? Uh, and they do, yeah, they're it doesn't doing sound it now good. at home. It really it's doesn't horrible. sound good, does it? And you're so but look, used worst to the case scenario, audience. we could do it. I mean, look. Yeah, but it's like just we like, both, why listen to it? We both basically live in self-isolation anyway, so yeah. neither of us, I don't think either of us are at a huge risk. Yeah. It's like when you're having sex with someone and then they just say, have you been tested? And you just haven't been had sex in so long. You're like, I don't need you, B. <laughs> <laughs> that is That's life. us, but with social interaction. <laughs> wow. How yeah. sad. Social virgins. No, social incels. We we have socialized with people before, just not often. Yeah. That's why we're so observant. But anyway, what are we actually going to talk about in this podcast? What I mean, are Well, I mean, well, that's our fifteen out. minutes of banter. In. Yeah. Um look, I was just thinking nothing to do with coronavirus because I just don't think about it much. But I was thinking about just uh, noting out what your thoughts are on charisma. Ooh. What is it and who has it? Because time and time again, you just get this over and over. And it's, it's a classic line in comedy, right? It's just like, it's not, about the, it's not about the line, it's about the delivery. I don't know if I agree with that. They say, Why? what do they say? They say it's uh, 20% the material, 80% the delivery. I think it's at least 50% the audience. <laughs> yeah, that's... It's but very true. yes, to get the audience on your side, you're going to need good delivery. But here's the counter argument to it when you like, okay, yes, I agree. You do have those bad shows where the audience is just giving you nothing. Mm. Do you think, just for argument's sake, if you were Barack Obama and you walked on stage, I don't know why I'm always using him. I'm going to use someone else. All right. If you were Boris Johnson and you walked on stage, do you think that they'd have the same response? Man, that's like a very hard analogy to get my head on. Because I can't... I don't don't know. Does Boris Johnson have good comedic timing? Yeah, he's fucking funny, man. Look, he's pretty funny. But but it's different being funny as a politician versus being a stand-up comedian. It has, I'm telling you, it has crossover because it's oratory. It's got the same thing okay, like yeah. public speeches and presentation. They yes. do have timing. Good politicians are quick. Yes. But when the audience is expecting a stand-up show, it's, it's very different. Yeah. To when yeah. they're just expecting a political speech and you throw a few funny one-liners in there. Mm. Charismatic, funny Boris Johnson... Witty English one-liners, <laughs> whatever he did. It was funny when he, uh, the reporters were uh, hounding him and he just brought out tea. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah. Politicians with charisma. Politicians without charisma never do well. No. But you can be a bad... You, you don't have to be that intelligent. Well, usually they go hand in hand. There's probably a crossover with definitely with at least emotional intelligence 
and charisma, but you don't have to be extremely intelligent or we can say you don't have to be extremely intellectual as a politician, but if you're charismatic, you'll do really well. It'll carry you. Yeah. I think it's, it's the po- secret. It is the X factor. It's a popularity contest. Really, like... It's the most important trait. National elections are just high school elections on a much grander scale. Yeah, I agree. The person in high school, the popular guy that's like, I'm going to put Coke in the bubblers. It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, okay. I will say, definitely, like, I've got a whole show about it. We talk you, about it all the time. Obviously, media bias is, like, the thing tax. that makes it. But, like... Tony Robbins always has this point. <laughs> Lower tax is the coke in the bubblers for, <laughs> for old people. <laughs> <laughs> it is, though. And it is. It is. It's not even lower taxes. It's tax loopholes. That's the coke of the bubblers. Yes. And you promise that, you're in. You're a shoe in for sure. Anything to do with Migration property. restrictions. I, dude, I reckon they would trade that in. They would trade that in for like a better deal on negative gearing any day of the week. That's what they really give a shit about. Oh, my house. Yeah, fuck you. Boomers, um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's their fucking coke. Um, but yeah, look. Tony Robbins always has this point. I don't think that he's particularly wrong on it either, is that he goes into every election and he says that, you know, almost with 100% certainty, he can tell in every national election who's going to win, basically just by, like, who looks the best, who sounds the best, who makes you feel the best. Hmm. And uh, what was well, the other one? What if, let's go... And conviction, certainty. All right, well, do you want to go, well, let's look at the last few elections in... Let's just let's just look at Australia. Scott Morrison versus Bill Sean. Bill Sean had absolutely no charisma at all. And Scott Morrison used to be... I'm not saying, like, Scott Morrison's, you know, amazingly charismatic, but he used to be a pastor... Or, you know, used to do, like, yeah, speeches at like, church and stuff. So against has... Bill Shorten. That's like, you know... No, that's... that's like racing against the kid with one leg. You know, yeah. like, you, 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 <laughs> you just don't even need to have charisma. <laughs> yeah. He's he, He's got... It's not... Yeah, it's not even about the charisma, but it was definitely, like, he... he and I will give Scott Morrison this. He is a very clear speaker. Hmm. When he speaks, he makes his message very, very simple to the point. Yeah. And... Clarity in itself is something that is, I think, hand in hand with presentation. Yep. All right, let's go back. Uh, Turnbull, Shorten. Turnbull, definitely much more charismatic. But his charisma would, I feel like his charisma would appeal to upper middle class or middle class people, but would working class people, they, he was would, a wanker. They, would turn, they would be turned off by it. That kind of, it, Turnbull has intellectual charisma. Yeah, I think... Definitely working class Australia would think he's a wanker. But he's definitely more charismatic than Bill Shorten is. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. There's only... The only examples that I can think of that are counterexamples oh, are... You know, John Howard beating Paul Keating. I mean, I, I use it in the stand-up show. Paul Keating was so charismatic, he was on Rolling Stone magazine. Like, like you know, reserved but for again, rock But again, was he a bit more of that kind of Malcolm Turnbull style, uh, in, you know, intellectually charismatic? That would yeah, appeal to... Yeah, very arrogant. Like yeah. Malcolm Turnbull. Yeah, so uh, whether or not that appeals to... But then maybe there's something to be said about it. even if they're uh, a bit of a wanker, at least if they're confident. <laughs> They've got it. At least if they're self-assured and confident. <laughs> All right, 2013, who was that? That was uh, Abbott and... Kevin Rudd. And Kevin Rudd. Yeah. No, Abbott's very unlikable. And he was he, he's a terrible, present, uh, he's a terrible mm. presenter. But this well, is what that's I'm one where like... Kevin... I think... Rudd has more charisma than Abbott, but because there was all that, well, we can go into the ins and outs of that, but he didn't, he was only, how long was he the prime minister before the election? A few months? Yeah, a few months. I can't remember how many, maybe less than six months. Julia Gillard had no charisma. No, no chance. But look, again, that's what I'm saying. The the overarching, that is a really good example of it because I will always, I will defend this point to the day I die, media bias is what carries candidates. It's the same thing with Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. The fact that Joe Biden won states that he didn't even have a campaign office in. He wasn't campaigning at all in those places. It's just the media narrative was just like, you know, Joe Biden's our guy. So everybody went and voted lockstep and key with him. But the difference is how badly you lose when it comes to that. Because Julia Gillard, when she was going to win against Tony Abbott. Like, it was looking like, you know, 
a, a, a historic wipeout for the Labor Party. When Kevin Rudd came in, by all analysis, he saved 25 seats, which is huge. So basically half of mm. the opposition. If Kevin Rudd wasn't there, the, the, the size of the opposition would have reduced by 50%. Mm. That's what charisma brings. It brings you 25 seats, you know, like... It's nothing to be messed around. It's nothing to be tampered with. And that, uh, you know, the, there are people out there much more charismatic than Kevin Rudd as well. Let's, yeah. In comparison to Julia Gillard, he's he definitely has more charisma. Yeah. But would you say in recent memory, Bob Hawke was probably the most charismatic? Extremely likable. And what does likeable. all the polling say? It says that he people carried minimum two of those elections. It's a good point. Minimum. If you actually asked someone, hey, what policies of Bob Hawke did you uh, truly support? The beer. <laughs> That'd be it. it oh, most he just people, seemed like a nice guy. It. Yeah. <laughs> he seemed like a legend. Yeah. That's, it, it carries you. Mm. Especially when it comes to like tied elections. Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. I can guarantee that there is no chance that someone like Jeb Bush would have won against Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Not a chance. Yeah. Yeah, um, Obama was like the king of charisma, yeah. without a doubt. Bill yeah. Clinton as well. Yeah. George Bush, I, look, it was a bit before my time, but from what I've seen, he did have a sort of affable, uh, larrikin, American redneck larrikin vibe about him. Dude, I think he was basically just like the Republicans' Joe Biden. He came across as just like a likable champ. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like he just kind of... Yeah. It just had this vibe of like, that guy would be sick to talk to in a bar. And that's so, that's much, so much of it. It's so much of it, can, man. Can I have a beer with this guy? Can I have a beer with you? Yeah. It, that should be it the, just gives the, off the this test. level of trust. That should be the test for when any party determines their leader. They should just put a bunch of, uh, like, get like a test audience, um, have them listen to a few speeches from the potential candidates and ask them, would you get a beer with that guy? Yeah. And if they're or just girl. like, he seems like a dickhead. Yeah. No, don't elect them. Like, again, I don't think that... Look, wow. I know that personally, Bill Shorten is, uh, you know, one of the most upstanding members of parliament. He was able to keep an opposition party together and focused for six years straight. That doesn't normally happen. Usually, I know there was, like, rule changes and things like that, but usually it's just backstabbing the whole time. Because if mm. you sense mm. any weakness at all... That's what happens, right? Like, he is, and everybody says this about him in the labor movement, that, like, you know, if Bill says he's going to do something, he's going to do something. He has a lot of personal integrity. It didn't translate to camera. And also, he's got, he kind of has this weird Sad slant way, to his head, this chain, mm. yeah, like a, a weird little midget head. Like, there's all these little things that were, like, working against him that it's just like, no. Like, even though you are actually what a prime minister is supposed to be, which is basically just, like, a manager, right like you're a very good manager but really especially in the day and age of camera and television papers and, and radio like you have to be more of a kevin rudd which is just like this master of all mediums that can go on carry Ann kenley and just be like you know i think it's being a mum is the hardest job on earth and then just go on like 7 30 report like let me finish lee 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 let me finish. You know, like <laughs> you know he's supposed to just, wow. he's supposed to just so easy to win brownie it. points with the housewives isn't it like yeah it is really tough being a mum <laughs> Oh, I'll but, vote for him. Yeah, if you say, yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's it, man. And, m dude, yeah. most politicians yeah. can't do that. Working, uh, like, uh, a lot of people will be like, yeah, I can get a beer with that guy. And then a lot of people would also be like, oh, he seems nice. And that's what, look, <laughs> even if you get that, just that, that is so much better than what most people in politics have, which is just like, dickhead. That's what most in people Australia, think in yeah, public. Yeah. Well, in America as well. Like, most mm. democracies, people just don't respect politicians. And if you just have a little bit above that of like, and that's what I think Joe Biden has. Like, nobody seems to mm. love him like Obama. It's kind of just like, yeah, he seems all right. Four or five years ago, he had it. He's, I don't know, man. Does he still have that? What do you mean? Like, he's really, in a, he's clearly uh, suffering from some cognitive decline. Yeah. He's not as fast on his feet as he was. If you look at, even if you just look at 2016, there were some interviews with him and he was very charismatic. Yeah. He was in control. He was yeah. confident. Yeah. Now he just is bumbling. He's look. He's still got remnants of it, but he just comes across as the the a bit of like the drunk uncle at the family gathering. That's just not quite there. Yeah, but dude, the, just the very fact that you said uncle. 
Okay, yeah, well... Don't you think? Like, he can't... Look, dude, I could see him as a family member of mine. Yeah. There's something okay. kind of familiar but is about that ca- him. But is that the kind of chariz- charisma that is going to carry him to... Well, whether it's an election victory, but, like, a, a good showing... Well, let me just, like, dude... On election If you go day. through all the other ones, right? Like, Tulsi Gabbard, like, I like her. She seems like a woman of integrity or whatever, but she... Dude, she seems very fucking boring. Like Bernie Sanders does have, she, but he, yeah, mm, she does. But I feel like she does have a sort of. Uh, she seems to have this kind of. She's she's very statesmanlike, yes, and true. that I think would appeal to people. Mm. She's not a nerd, for want of no, a better no, term. No. She's not a sort of bookish, typical politician. She does come across as a sort of strong leader, and I, I think that's why it's like military so many, training. Yeah, like Joe Rogan fans loved her. Yeah. And she's hot. That's yeah, I mean. yeah, she's she's pretty hot. <laughs> mm. Not gonna lie, but like I think that yeah, okay, she she definitely has that. But that's the whole thing, right? Like her appeal comes from mm. what Tony Robbins also talks about, which is just the uh, I can't ex- remember the exact word that he's talking about, but it, it's something along the lines of integrity. So it's the same thing with Bernie Sanders. Like Bernie Sanders does not sound as good as Joe Biden does. He doesn't look anywhere near as good as Joe Biden does. Um. Yeah. In terms of vibe, yeah. I think they're kind of just like 50-50. In fact, actually, I will even give Joe Biden that. Joe Biden gives me a better vibe than Bernie Sanders does. But in terms of integrity, like, you just can't compete with the man. Like, you know that that man yeah. means what yeah. he says. Like, it doesn't matter if you I disagree think even, or agree even with him. I think even people uh, uh, on the right would say he's been very consistent and honest. Throughout his whole career. And it resonates. Yeah. That's other, you can't buy that, right? Like, it's yeah. the same thing with Joe Biden. Like, he's got all of these three things coming into play. But, like, you know, the, the, it's just the fact that he had to play the game to get to the position to where he is, he has to use weasel words to get out of situations, and people can sense that. Mm. And so he just doesn't have that which is what Bernie Sanders has, which is his entire appeal is based off of that. No other politician in the Democratic race seemed to have it. But out of them, the best candidate that they had, really, when it comes to charisma, I think it really did just boil down to the two ones, which was Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Like, do, do you think any of the other ones really held any charisma that you think, oh, yeah, well, that would have been better to go up against Trump? Nope. <laughs> <I'm>, no. No. <laughs> Booker had a little bit of charisma. Yeah, true, I'll say Cory Booker true. had some. Yeah, but, but he also, he, he, dude, also he came off as very incongruent. He came off. He didn't seem to have any integrity. and too serious. Yeah, there was a sort of calmness about Obama that he just made you feel comfortable whenever yeah. he speaks. Yeah, you know there was and this... Booker did not. It didn't. He didn't give me that feeling. No, and he was. And he was clearly trying to model himself of Obama. Yeah, and it no. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole thing, right? Like, he just came off as that, like a really cheap bootlegged Obama. Yeah, but think about the sort of people that get into... Well, I don't know, it's interesting to get your thoughts on this, but I always think about the people who got into student politics at uni. They're not charismatic then. Why would they be charismatic when they're 60? Mm, that's such a good point. <laughs> it's it's actually... Sorry, I know there's probably a lot of people who are in student politics listening yeah, to this. Yeah, but you know what you are. You're a nerd. You're a creature. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, all right. We'll just go with the euphemism of nerd. But it's true. Like, yeah, everyone that goes into student politics, they just come off as power hungry, which is what they are usually. And, you know, Teach, very little teaches integrity. Pets. Teaches pets. You know, actually, uh, my social media manager made this point, and I think it's very, very true, especially when it comes to people like Scott Morrison. Scott Morrison, to me, just reminds me of somebody who liked being a prefect at school, which he was, and then thought, I'm going to make a career out of this. But so many politicians come across like that. Yeah. So many of them. They just seem like the sort of person that would want all that extra credit yeah. to just suck the teacher's dick. Yeah. And just want that attention. So they, do, they're you know not what? going into it as a leader. They're if you go- if you want to be uh, prime minister, if you have uh, ambitions in politics... You know what you should do? Instead of in your 20s working as an assistant to like the local council member, be a comedian. Do comedy for 10 years. No, but that fucks that, you up. That's uh, the problem. Okay, do acting. Do something yeah. where, you're, where you... You have to keep a clean where, Yeah, you have to... Uh, you can work on your charisma and 
you can uh, you can create that enthusiasm in a crowd, you're better off doing that. Yeah, I agree. And then getting into politics in your 30s or 40s. And you know what? That's what Paul Keating did, and that is why he is to this day regarded as being in a class of his own, like a real class s politician. What did he? What was his uh, background? Because he didn't go to university. He didn't play the student politics game. He yeah. knocked on the door of a former New South Wales Labor Premier, Jack Lang, who was known as a real boss figure of his time. In fact, just as a quick side note about him, uh, when the Depression was happening, London demanded all of its gold back that was in New South Wales Treasury. And so they got all of these bankers to come in, or like bank accreditors and stuff, to come in and collect it from Treasury. So he hired a bunch of fired foresters that were taken off to just stand outside with baseball bats like he used to do <laughs> shit like that <laughs> that's mad <laughs> <I know. laughs> see people would vote for someone like that now yeah what are you but like yeah, do this so <laughs> aussie <laughs> yeah old school aussie it's it goes back to the chris uh, honestly so many points that we make on this podcast i can i just relate them to chris rock jokes um chris rock has a He's joke right in, about it in Never Scared, which is a 2004 special he did, he's like, people vote on character and not on policy. Mm. And, mm. you know, he's, he was saying, like, I'm a little bit... I'm liberal on some things, I'm conservative on some things. On crime, I'm conservative. Uh, prostitution, liberal. <laughs> like, liberal. Yeah, yeah. And then you just look, you, you look at the candidate and you're like, yeah, he seems like a nice person. Yeah. They seem reasonable. Mm. Do you, Okay, so how about we... we do you want to focus on charisma just in the realm of politics or do you want to talk about it in how it can help people uh, in their well, day-to-day everyone. life? And like it obviously affects everybody, right? It's just like if you have charisma... How intrinsic do you think it is? Do you think people are born charismatic or do you think it's a learned skill? I think it's definitely learnable, but I think it's just like all of these other character traits, just some people have it. Yeah. I really think that like, look... But is that a product of their environment or... I think it. I think it's more environmental than, uh, well, because yeah, there wouldn't be like a genetic. <laughs> like the Why wouldn't there gene. be, dude? Like they, 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 they very well could be. Why? Like why well, not? I, I there's feel genes like, for like blue eyes. Yeah, but don't you think charisma is more? Well, charisma is more. Uh, it's sort of a consequence of a high emotional intelligence. And confidence and other aspects of your character, right? Yeah, but like, you know how some people are just like, it, it's genetic that some people are like more predisposed to depression or anxiety and things. These are mental, these are mental states. Mm, true. What true. if there's just like, you're yeah. more predisposed no, you're right, to thinking you're a champion? It, it's probably Is true. That, that's not all, because there are pl- plenty of really arrogant people out there that have the same thought. Yeah, okay, not think you're a champion, just more predisposed to being Coming a across as a champion. Because <laughs> yeah. if you ask someone like a, a Obama, he'd be like, oh, no, I'm not a champion. The champions out there are the average yeah, men and yeah. women working. People serving in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those people are their champions, not me. <laughs> I'm just a regular guy doing but, my job. That's, that's but dude, someone. you know in his head he's thinking the whole time, yeah, I'm a champion. Br- Oh. He's definitely thinking. Well, he's it. so charismatic. I just, I can't. I feel like he's so authentic. I, I don't know with him. Like I know Trump, without a doubt, is thinking that in his head. Well, or he could be thinking. It. Well, he could be saying that, and he could. Be or really it, yeah. Nah. Subconsciously. Nah. He he, he pulls it off too well. He's yeah, but he's suppressed that. He's suppressed that uh, insecurity so far down. With, with this uh, excessive confidence and arrogance, but that insecurity is still there. That and might that's be driving true. it. That might be true, but the thing is, like, look, in, in terms of what he is able to do to a crowd, does it matter? It doesn't really matter if he has, okay, like, no, insecurity that, or yeah, not. Yeah, like, he's, yeah, he's got yeah, the sure, tools. Sure, sure. That's, that's true, yeah, that's true. And I'd say he's even more charismatic than Obama. Obama just comes off as like, you know, competent. Mm. But uh, but Trump's got this kind of factor of like, dude, I turn on his rallies, random rallies. And I'll just sit there glued for like half an hour. Like I don't do that to anyone. Maybe Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones is really charismatic. <laughs> but like this No, really- I I think uh 
would you call Alex Jones charismatic or just was... call him really confident and But do you do you ever watch Alex Jones and you just like the Joe Rogan podcast, right? Everybody was yeah, saying the same yeah, thing. Okay. I listened to all four and a half hours of it or however fair, long it was, right? Fair. But is that his charisma that's uh drawing you in and, and keeping you I don't know keeping your attention? Or is it just the fact that he's just, just brazen and, and crazy with what he says? <laughs> like is that charisma? You know, is Alex is Jones it? the sort of guy at a party that everyone would gravitate towards? Yeah, I think so. Don't you? If Alex at Jones a party, was here, dude, no, people would be like, I like this guy's talking insane. to you, but I need to know what that guy thinks about like the thirty third parallel and shit. Like <laughs> maybe you, guy. but like I think the average person would be like, that guy's insane. Whereas Obama's the sort of person he go to a party and like everyone would be like, wow, that guy's a cool guy. You're not gonna you're not gonna uh, listen to Alex Jones and be like that guy's a cool guy. You're gonna be like that guy's insane. Yeah, but but he keeps your attention. Is that like yeah. it doesn't matter how he does it? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. Like, look, dude, like keep, Charlie yeah, Manson. Yeah. yeah Actually, he, you know he keeps your attention. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Because you know, uh, I don't but know. But is that? But is that? But again, like, is that his charisma? Is it? Is it just? Is is? Do you define charisma as just the ability to keep one's attention? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's such a. Because if all you like, these concepts are like nailing jelly to a wall. Like, wh- what is it? It's just like an X factor, you know. Like, there's all these different people, and they all just have like a different yeah. vibe that they're giving off, but. It's weird because you could say Joe Biden's charismatic, even though I don't really like listening to him for that long. But it, like, it's kind of this thing. Right, like you, right, right. What, what you're describing is obviously Obama's not a good example, but if you're if you're describing that, yeah, Joe Biden in a room, people are just probably going to you know minus the dementia or whatever, they're just going to sit there and be like, yeah, that guy seems kind of cool and stuff. And then with Alex Jones, they're going to be like, that guy's crazy. But the thing is, you are glued to Alex Jones. And if he's holding yeah, your attention, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Isn't that char- isn't that charisma? Uh, I'd still differentiate between the 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 um the means in which uh someone like a Biden or or an Obama can hold people's attention versus I think a lot of Alex Jones is just like shock factor. <laughs> it's shock factor, but there's like elements of truth that you agree with in there, so you just can't help but li- I, it it would be very hard to define that. But I just don't know if charisma is the right. The way I interpret charisma, I don't know if I'd define it with that. Okay, well... But I, I get what you mean. Like, it's very attention-grabbing. There's the example of... It's kind of related to it, I think, is like, have you ever seen interviews with Charles Manson? No, I haven't actually, no. Because that is another example of... You sit in a... You, like, someone just sits there and interviews him for an hour straight. There's just, you know person after person interviewing him from major network stations. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah he, he was a fascination of America for 40 years, um, constantly on television. And you know what else is weird as well? You can talk to your mum's generation, and there's so many of them that, like, they know that he's, like, a, you know, a mass murderer or orchestrated mass murders. Mm. Um, they know this, but, dude, you can tell. Boomer chicks... Get wet over Charles Manson. Dude, millennial chicks get wet. Really? Yeah. No, Ted Bundy. That's the one they Ted like. Bundy. Well, same thing. It's a, yeah, it's the same. I'd thing. say it's Charles same. Manson is like a more extreme version of it. But the thing is, like, man, when you watch Charles Manson, Manson it's the same thing as Alex Jones. It is, But it's magnified. Alex Jones seems reasonable in comparison to Charles Manson, but the whole time you're right. sitting there and you are glued. And the other thing is you can tell when there is a female journalist interviewing him, they're not only fascinated, they are attracted to him. Even though they know he's a mass murderer. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. It's, there's something to it, right? Imagine how much incels would hate that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Fuck I can't get laid But this guy can Yeah sorry It's an unfair <laughs> And he <world>. killed people <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. you know and, 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 it, and it would be uh, it, would, it would induce a lot of hate <laughs> I would understand that Yeah and it's the whole thing It's like <laughs> Damn it, it, Dude That whole idea That just like You know In shells are mash murderers And stuff like that No No but Look a lot of A lot of the a lot of serial killers are extremely charismatic. Well, it's one or the other. They're either really charismatic or they're just re- 
they're reclusive. Actually, I suppose and it kind of depends. Yeah, because it depends on your st- your style of killing. Like, if you're just going to walk into a mall with a grenade, you don't need to have any charisma at all. But if you're no. just going to be like, "Hey, you want to come back to my place? Yeah, we just play some music." Like, yeah, yeah then you need. Then you got to be char- charismatic for sure, for sure. The other one that I heard that apparently is like really charismatic is a uh, guy that killed himself from NSS, Michael Hutchins. Yeah. Well, all, uh, yeah, a lot of pop stars and and rock stars and that they'd have to have. Charisma. Can't so, be, you can't be like an insecure pop star. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe nowadays. Oh, well, so I mean, good. yeah, that, now that, it's, it's cool. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yuck. <laughs> yes. Fuck. Let's create a star, the insecure pop star. Ugh. That would sell well. I'm uh, <laughs> putting my, I'm putting yourself. my like Sony hat on. Well, they do. That's that. That is the style. I don't know if it's the style anymore, but like a couple of now. years ago, it definitely yeah. was. Every yeah. song is just complaining about your insecurity. That was top 40. You know, a good yeah. thing about this uh, pandemic is like all the people who would get attention from how they'd be isolated and they'd be alone. Now they can't get that attention anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> special <sucked in>. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, they're going to have to be special by having a positive outlook on life. Yeah. What an inverted yeah, world. So it would actually wean out the ones who genuinely were suffering versus the ones who just wanted attention because now the ones who just wanted attention will go full 360 yeah and be like hey guys everything's fine <laughs> six months ago Choose you were life. just you were the most cynical person <laughs> on facebook that's the, yeah that mm. obviously like if, if you're going to go down that route you, you've got no choice i think that's look so charisma can make you the president and, and a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. And get away with it. And even if you are guilty as sin, still have huge swaths of women protesting outside courtrooms for your release, even though they know you're guilty. That's the power of Damn. charisma. But I don't know what it is, but look, I think that maybe well, it does boil down to keeping attention. Well, I think uh, if you are charismatic, you're going to keep attention. But I also think there are people who are, might not have charisma but can keep people's attention. But I'm trying to but think of what an example is. Well, just going back to Alex Jones, again, I just... Well, we can keep going down that, but I don't... I just wouldn't... But why wouldn't he be charismatic then? Uh, I just don't... It's not... Because, like, insanity isn't a boundary because, look, Charles yeah, Manson and yeah. Ted Bundy had it. I'm trying to I'm trying to describe uh I don't again it's just more of a feeling that when when you see someone like Alex Jones you're not like that guy's a cool guy that guy's suave <laughs> that's to me like like to me yeah ch- charismatic men of you know they're very suave they're uh they're devilishly handsome well they're not always handsome but they have that appeal you know that it's that kind of gravitas that they have whereas Alex Jones is. I'm trying to think of someone else who who, who comes under that same maybe it's, like attention. They they grab people's attention, but they they wouldn't have what I would call charisma. I'm I'm just trying to. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm still trying to think. Um, Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alan Jones. Mm. Like he grabs your attention, but I wouldn't call him charismatic. Yeah, he just he grabs your attention through just sheer will by the like they like they yell and they're aggressive and they're assertive, um, and they're opinionated. All those things are attention grabbing, but I wouldn't say someone like Alan Jones or uh, Alex Jones, for that matter, a charismatic. Damn. Okay. Man, or Rush you know Limbaugh. I, like he's not. Uh, he kind of has this sort of old. Southern gentlemanly, little bit of charisma to him, but but yeah, okay. The the, the one that came to mind there was just Alan Jones. I don't know why, but no, it makes sense. I would. Would you say Alan Jones has charisma? No, I'm thinking now that it's like if you are forcing <laughs> attention, yeah, you're not charismatic. Yeah, it's it's an it, there's something effortless about the attention you're uh, gaining. Dude, it is the word attractive. Yeah. You're attractive. Yeah. 
So like Alan Jones and Alex Jones are not attractive. Your personality is attractive. That's the thing as well. Because mm. there are a lot of physically attractive people who just don't have any charisma. Yeah, there's something kind of just like, I, I want to trust and believe in that man there. And you're right. Like both Alan Jones and Alex Jones, you don't want to believe what they're saying really. Like, you, <laughs> I don't know. You're kind of forced to contemplate it, I guess, because of, yeah, exactly how assertive they're being. They instill fear into you. Whereas charismatic people uh, give you a sense of comfort. That's, that's, yeah. I think, you know what? That, that to me, that's the way I would define it. And dude, you know what? Honestly, if you go and watch those Charlie, Charlie Manson videos, and I recommend that you do it because you will just go down a rabbit hole. Like I just watch <laughs> really? video after video. Like he's hour. that comforting. <laughs> it's not like, dude, it's like a combination of both. Like he's like hypnotic. And like the whole time you're sitting there and you're watching him, you're like, there's no way this guy's a murderer. Like, He's sick. Like, he's just a cool, weird hippie. Wow. He's just really hypnotic. And you want to listen to him. Damn. I mean, my only... I, I, I've seen that. And What's like, that show you... on Netflix where they depict Charles, Charles Manson? Oh, what's it called? Is there a movie about him? Is no, there? there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a show on Netflix. It's really good. It's uh, all about in the 70s when uh, the serial killer phenomenon was just emerging and there's a special task force of the FBI... Uh, and there's one guy in particular who goes and studies these serial killers. Everyone's a lot of people. Have, I'm just I'm just mind blanking on the name, but they have someone depict um, Charles Manson there, and he's not that charismatic. But that's the actor then. <laughs> 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 oh, what's that show called? Wait, do you? Did, I, I, don't, I know Mind you Hunter. Mind Hunter. My, okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's in, there's someone playing Charles Manson in it. Yeah, I think so, unless I got it wrong. But yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. Do they come off as charismatic in the show? Or uh, no? A little bit, but also a bit crazy. Well, yeah, he definitely did have that. But I don't feel comfortable when I... <laughs> that's probably the actor. And also, probably they have a drone playing in the background every time he's there being like... Mm. There's probably lighting yeah. and all this other shit that's around him, and he's probably doing something crazy True. that... I don't know, man. When you when you just see him interviewing with someone in a room, and you can tell, you can tell that the female reporters are moist. And my own mum admitted it. Like I was just like, she was just like, oh, I'll stop watching Charles Manson. I was like, dude, he's really interesting. And she was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, we all went through a phase of having a crush on him in the seventies. <laughs> so there's just, dude, like it's it's not. Oh my god. I think charisma is kind of like money or any of these magnifiers in life, right? It really depends what you're using it on, but it's it's definitely a tool. It definitely exists. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you could just use it for anything. You could almost say it's the it's it's probably one of the biggest variables that will define not only your success but how well liked you are. Yeah. It's it's everything. So what the fuck is it, dude? Like, <laughs> like I've, I've been thinking about it all week. I've been trying to nut it out. And you've actually helped me distill it a little bit better in my mind anyway, because now I can at least say, okay, Alex Jones comfort. is not yeah, you're charismatic. Making people, people feel comfortable. It's definitely that. Um, there's a magnifying energy that people just gravitate towards. You look up to them. Yeah. Do you want to believe them? You want to believe the best? You know what? There's, it's it's an emotional connection is what it is. Yeah. Because there's nothing, uh, there's no sort of uh, logical process behind why you are gravitating towards someone with charisma versus someone who might not have charisma, who could be saying something correct. But the charismatic person is the person we're all going to gravitate towards. Yeah. Because ultimately we're all, we talk about this every podcast, but we're irrational and emotional beings. Mm. Mm. And, and there's just something... It's 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 the emotional intelligence that they have as well, and that's uh, that's really attractive to people, and not just in a romantic or uh, physical way. I think men would be attracted, uh, sort of. Well, maybe we yeah, won't use the word attracted. No, but it's to, like but the like, 1900s version, like the 1800s version of the word attraction. Yes, yeah, like it's like that. It's, yeah, it is that. Yeah, you know, I um I gravitate towards someone like Obama and Clinton because they just. Yeah, they have an attractive feature to them. They command uh, your attention, but in a way that is very comforting. 
Dude, you're so right. Because, like, look, when it comes to Trump, when it comes to Obama, it, it doesn't matter how many exposés I see about, you know, uh, I don't know, Trump's sordid tax history or, I don't know, his connections to Russians. or You, you can pump any shit on him you want. At the yeah. end of the day, it's just like, I don't care. He's funny. Like, I, I want that guy to win in life purely because he makes me laugh. Yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he just seems like a champ. And it's the same thing with Joe Biden. It's the same thing with Obama. Like, every time you ever hear your Kyle Kalinskis and stuff, just rag on them for, you know, an hour straight about their corrupt dealings or whatever. He's like, hey, lay off the guy, all right? You know, like, he's, he's got a nice, nice, nice posture. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's got nice posture. It just works. Yeah. It doesn't, like... It, after that, yeah, like, words don't matter after that. Yeah, yeah. It hits something more primal. Well, what do you think? Why do you think we evolved to be attracted to that kind of, uh, em- more of that emotional intelligence, if you will, and that kind of uh, gravitas and charisma versus just the logical leader? who might be quite dry and yeah. lack personality, but we've somehow evolved to be attracted to that. Or is it just yeah. a byproduct of some other Darwinian process that's occurred over the centuries? I don't know what the advantage would be. The only thing that I can think... I think it comes down to our tribalism. Like, we're, tri- we're, we're going to... The, the, the humans that had more inclination to be emotionally and irrationally attached to their tribe... We're going to win out over the other tribes that weren't banded together mm. as strongly. Mm. And that same, uh, that, same, that same effect would occur in being attracted to the person with charisma. Yeah. If that makes Especially sense. Especially because, yeah, they're the ones that are bringing that emotion together. They, yeah. They are, it's yeah. It's because if everybody's like paying attention to them, they're kind of just acting as like a glue for the rest of the group. Yeah. And you know what else? And I that, think can, it is? that can be a placebo because then even if that person isn't necessarily the most logical or even correct in their leadership and whatever, and I'm not even just talking in a political sense, it's in a tribal way, but because everyone feels so uplifted by their presence. That in itself, that positive, that positivity would benefit the group. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Damn, you are raising everybody's emotions, and that can only be good. Well, in most situations, that can only be good. Yeah, yeah you'll have your yeah. cult leaders and shit that'll wipe the the tribe out, but you know, nine times out of ten, that probably won't happen. But the tribes would feel like they're doing the right thing. Yeah, and they move probably into probably be it. very productive within that cult. Yes, and. The other thing is, if you are more charismatic, I'm guessing most of the time you're going to be more decisive than someone who is logical. Someone who is logical will be fretting about their decision to the very last minute. They'll be thinking about all the different variables. Most people will just be like, sure, what do we yeah. do? It probably wouldn't be as black and white. They'd be more interested in the nuance of a particular decision, whereas the charismatic person might just passionately follow one path well that's pretty much trump in a nutshell right well yeah it's just like you know it basically just boils it down to like america will win under me under the democrats you're gonna lose okay and he just says it with such conviction that he gets like cheering audiences of fifty thousand people a night yeah doesn't matter about the fact of it. I mean, everybody knows that point that, you know, facts don't really matter at the end of the day. It's really just about vibe. But I think, yeah, if you're talking about the evolutionary sense, especially in a, like a really harsh, scary environment where you aren't really the top predator, man, that psychological advantage would be so welcome. Mm. Because... Honestly, like it's like it's the saying that they say in um, NLP all the time, which is just like eighty percent of life is psychology, and so if you have like a superior oh, only mindset, eighty. Well, maybe probably well, more than that. Maybe it's hard, dude. If you're charismatic enough, you can make it more than that. 
Maybe, dude. You, that, can, you can do whatever you want. Damn. Okay. You are bending the matrix with charisma, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, well. just the fact that Trump is president, he bent the matrix. He shouldn't be president. Like, the system is not set up for that man to be there. No. He, dude, that was... Well, we're, again, like, we're all irrational. But it's just... Uh, yeah, and like... And he played... That's incredible. Driven by our emotions. He played the mainstream media against itself. And I don't even... Honestly, I don't think that he's smart enough to have this great... Grand, I know from talking to Kevin Rudd that Kevin Rudd did have... Because Kevin Rudd's an extremely intelligent man. He had a plan of how he was going to manipulate the media yeah. beforehand. And it worked to devastating effect in 2007. And by 2013, Murdoch and the rest of the gang had kind of like closed up all of those gaps that he used. Yeah. Um, Trump, I don't think, had that. He had like some basic things of like, if you say outrageous shit, you can dominate the, the cycle for that day or whatever. But like, man, well, he invo- kind of put it in this position where the press had to report on him. Sure, they and had, I think he's otherwise also, they'd lose out. I think he's a product of his environment in that, you know, New York real estate through the late twentieth century. <laughs> You're dealing with like probably the the most cocky, arrogant people on the planet. Mm. I mean, you mm. have to. Yeah. The only way to stand out there is to be the loudest. Yeah. The most charismatic. The most confident. And then reality TV, American cable TV. You have to just stand out. You just have to do something that grabs people's attention. So he's mm. just had. Decades of being uh, in the zone, yeah, refining that particular oh, part sick. of his character. Damn, we always just <laughs> we just analyze Trump on this podcast. <laughs> it's an interesting thing to do, though. Oh, it's the it's, biggest. It's what, like you know, it's it's the story of our time, isn't it? The fact yeah. that he's the even in Australia, the fact that he's the leader of the f- the free world. Well, who, who in Australia is very... Carl Stefanovic is very, very charismatic. Yeah, he gets he it. He comes to mind. Mm. Steve Irwin was extremely charismatic. Um, There's an energy to both of them. Paul Hogan, that kind of Aussie larrikin. Um, well, you know what? A lot of that charisma came from this sort of laid-back confidence out of all of them. A lot of them... Dave are, Hughes is very charismatic. Oh. In real life? As a comedian, he's pretty charismatic. Mm, he's also a character. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, maybe not. Maybe not Dave Hughes. But it, look, Carl Stevanovic comes to mind. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure people in, in the media industry would say he's, he might not be the, <laughs> the, the most intelligent journalist out there. But he's so charismatic. Mm. And look, when people, when working people are turning on the TV in the morning, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to be, um, they don't want to have to think. No. They just want to be entertained mm. Mm. before they go to their arduous job. Mm. And he does that. So that's why he brings in the big bucks. And that's why even after firing him, they had to come crawling back and bring him back to TV. Yeah. Because there was no other option. Carl Sandler, Carl and, Carl and Jackie O as a duo, they're pretty charismatic. Well, they give off an energy, yeah, especially they, when you're listening yeah, to them. There's, do, yeah. 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 There's something that they have that other people don't. Mm. Yeah, you know what? It like, is just an X factor. Sometimes it's hard to quantify. There's certain things you could say, you know, uh, obviously confidence is a big aspect, sense of humor. Likeability, but likability is very vague as well. That's really subjective. Some people will like some people more than others. Um, posture probably is a big part of it. Yeah, charismatic people aren't gonna slouch. Mm. Emotional intelligence is just to, to, they're saying the right things at the right time in the in the social moment. They know what to say. Yeah, but there's got to be a reason that they know that. Like, there, there's definitely a gel that is happening there that I think... You know, how, how does this phrase... How does this phrase gel with you? Walking through the world with ease. Uh, in terms of, what, like, that's what they have. Yeah. Kind of like they just have this plan. 
that they, they know what they're doing. Definitely, they come off as authentic. Um, they come off as really uh, sure of themselves. Really sure of high self esteem, which is different to just high confidence. Mm. Um, yeah, so all those factors, you, you know, you can. T- well, I mean, what are they t- in all these like pickup artistry things? And like, even if you're teaching someone to become a public speaker, you're basically trying to instill into them some form of charisma. Yeah. But like, I I don't know. There's there's, and you know who else I think really has it? Yeah. People there's there's this certain sweet point. There's this Goldilocks point of doing a certain cocktail of drugs before your brain gets too fried. <laughs> but you've been to some dimensions that other Jesus. people haven't. You know what? what they I remember career. someone saying that, yes, I think they do. It's just this thing of like, you know, dudes that like yeah. to party heaps. They have a charisma. They have a magnetism. Mm. And I was asking somebody who, because yeah. I've obviously never done any of that True. shit. Yeah. But I was asking someone who has, and he is a very charismatic man. And I was saying it about, what is it about acid? And he's just saying that, dude, it's just because you go on this like weird tangent of like, you, you, there's points where you think, am I in another dimension or not? Like I can't, I, I, I don't know if this is real, more real than reality. Like it does that to your brain. And then you come back out of it and then you're like, huh, maybe I shouldn't care so much if this chick likes me or not. Like that's that's really the realisation that happens. Most of the anecdotes I've heard from people taking um, hallucinogenic drugs, uh, they've gone on some insane journey and they've come out with that same conclusion. So it's Mm, definitely something... Things in this realm don't matter so much. (laughs) (laughs) Because <laughs> there's many reds. But, but then I've also yeah, people who meditate a lot uh, come to those same conclusions. So yeah, so I'm, I th- I'm more on the on the boat of I think meditation is probably the oh I, you're not the gonna right get any, way to do it. Yeah, you're not going to get any pushback from me on that. But I'm just using it, I guess, as an example because it, it might be something to do with um, living in the moment. Charismatic people definitely look like they're in the moment at all times. You're right about that. They're definitely they're, they're definitely present. not reacting. They're definitely not thinking like, "What's this person going to think no, if I say this?" And there's they're nothing not, else on their no. mind. They're in the moment at that particular time. Yeah, they're enjoying that moment. So it might just come back to uh, yeah. It, it might just come back to that. It might just, just go come to more back parties. To like they... <laughs> That's how you become more charismatic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But dude, like, we kept would... saying it. We kept saying, like, yeah, I'd like to hang out with that guy at a bar. I'd like to hang out with him at a yeah. barbecue yeah. party. So yeah. that's where they feel well, naturally at their vibe. It's just, yeah, it's sleazy pickup artists. Mm. Like, so they, they would be sick prime ministers. They bring, uh, <laughs> in a very serious context, they bring that uh, leisurely energy. And Damn. people really are attracted to that. Yeah. So it's about walking into a very serious environment making people feel like it's a fun environment. That's probably the simplest way to put it. I mean, look, when I was interviewing Kevin Rudd, that's what happens. As soon as he enters the room, obviously all eyes are on him because he's a former prime minister or whatever. But the thing is, a lot of the times, if you are in a room with someone who is like of high stature, because I've been in a room with other people of high statures, like, you know, uh, you know, ministers in Pakistan and shit like that. And some of them have it. And then some of them, when they walk in the room, you're terrified of them. And they never get rid of that ambience of fear. But the thing is, Kevin Rudd walks through the room. You're just like, (gasps) and then he's just like instantly kind of just like makes everyone feel at ease. Just life of the party, sits down. There you go. Swears a couple of times. He's he's trying to make everyone feel at ease. Yeah. All right. Well, we we should probably conclude this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in conclusion, <laughs> yeah, what is the conclusion? Be more charismatic. Nothing. We just we just had a good discussion there. I think it's something to do with ease. Yeah. It's it's okay. I think that yeah, that's the conclusion. Definitely it's just like it. yeah, if, yeah. if you're able to make people feel comfortable, they're going to think you're more charismatic. Yeah. Damn. Thinking of others. That's the other thing. You got to think of how I can make other people feel comfortable versus how most of us are always thinking how how can I feel more comfortable. But. 
it kind of just like it's that state transferal thing, right? If you're comfortable, other people are going to be more comfortable. Dude, yeah. If you're fucking freaked out, other people are going to f- sense that. Yeah. And they're going to push back a bit. That's why sometimes you, you, you meet people and you're just like, that guy's a serial killer. He's probably never fucking killed anyone in his life. And then you have people like Ted Bundy and you're like, that guy's awesome. And the ironic thing is that person probably is a serial, is a serial, killer. serial killer. There you go. Okay, sorry. We'll <laughs> All right. Um, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. And... In, hope you're doing well in these <laughs> crazy Take care times. Of yourself and yeah. each other. <laughs> <laughs> How comforting. Cheers.